Hello, I'm Zeta Kai for the Gunpla Network, and this time we're going to be doing a review of the Master Grade Delta Plus. The Delta Plus was released in 2011 and sells for a suggested yen price of 4,950 Japanese yen. And when I did the unboxing, I was met with a lot of messages expressing your condolences for me for choosing this particular Master Grade to assemble. And over the years, I've seen on the internet that this is a bad kit and it has many problems. And so let's find out if that's true. Let's find out if, in the words of Unicorn, this kit is a curse or a possibility. Now the Delta Plus is molded in a few colors. You get a gray blue for a lot of the armor, a darker blue, some white, and a lot of gray for the inner frame. And that's pretty much it. The Delta Plus isn't exactly a vibrant, colorful mobile suit, and the model kit is also not very vibrant or colorful. But it faithfully represents what you see on the screen if you're watching Gundam Unicorn. The model kit has a lot of nice details, as you would expect out of any Master Grade, and looks really, really good. It's probably the strongest point of this model kit. The Delta Plus looks great. It has a lot of nice little details all over it. Uh, the stacking armor you get at any Master Grade is apparent here. You get some very nice inner frame poking out. I really like this part here on the forearms and the legs are super intricately detailed. You get a lot of little white plastic to pick out all of those little color bits. You get a seated ritty figure for in your cockpit and some more exposed inner frame on your ankles as you would anything in the Delta or Hyakushiki line. It looks really good. If you did some detail painting, it would really make this kit pop. Uh, another thing that would help this kit would be like some highlighting or shading. So let's take a look at some of the accessories. You get some beam saber hilts and some beam saber effect parts. They're molded in a nice clear blue, which is a rarity among master grades. Not a lot of clear blue beam effect parts. So that looks pretty cool. You get these two little bits that help in the transformation. They go in the hips. We're on those later. You get an action base connector that's a lot like the Zeta 2.0 connector. A sheet of seals, some marking seals for Londo Bell, Romeo 8, you can put on your Delta Plus or Romeo whatever. Some dry transfers and one very small sheet of foil stickers. You get an option of red eyes or the silver eyes. I used the red on my kit. The shield is very nice. Um, we can debate the merits of this small shield at another time, but it looks really good and it looks like what you see in the show. It has a lot of movable pieces, a lot of those for the transformation, some of those for connecting to the arm. And you get a nice little beam cannon, the grenade launchers, and you can take the hilts and store them on the shield. This works actually really well. I was afraid that the hilts would get stuck inside, but it works pretty well. I like it. This is the only part of the kit that you can find on another kit. This is the beam rifle. It's actually from the Master Grade Rezel. It has a removable E-Pack clip here on the back that you can take off and put on the beam rifle. And it also comes with two spare energy packs. They don't really store anywhere, but you get them nonetheless. You get two pilot figures. Well, one's not really a pilot. I guess it's Riddy and Audrey or Mineva. And that's it for the accessories. It's not a lot of accessories, but it's everything you would expect to see in the Delta Plus and everything that it uses in the show, except maybe the, uh, the Beam Magnum, huh? So let's take a moment to talk about our sponsor for this video. And that would be CanadianGundam.com. You can go to CanadianGundam.com, you can use the coupon code Gunpla Network, and you can buy lots and lots of plastic model kits, accessories, and hobby supplies. One of the great things about Canadian Gundam is they are constantly restocking. You can check out their restock videos, their package videos here on our channel, or you can subscribe to their channel here on YouTube as well. Canadian Gundam will take care of all your Gunpla needs. Okay, let's talk articulation. The head moves around quite a bit, has an extra joint at the base of the neck, can look up and down. The shoulders, uh, okay, this isn't the last time we're gonna be talking about this little C clip, but let's get back to the articulation. So the arm moves up, but only about that far. The shoulders will move back and forth. 
Uh, they don't move back and forth a whole lot because of the transformation in the chest. The bicep will swivel all the way around. The arm will spin all the way around, 360 degrees, no problems there. And you get a nice double jointed elbow. The wrists are a ball joint and move around like you would expect. And the fingers are a 3, 1, and a thumb like the Order Master Grades. There's not a lot going on in the chest, just a ball joint at the base of the torso. The front skirts are really small, but they have a good amount of articulation. They actually hinge in two different spots, which is nice. And the back skirt will move like this, and the side skirts will rotate around. The legs will kick forward pretty far, especially after you get the knee armor out of the way of the front skirt. Now, unfortunately, I forgot to show you, but these are ball-jointed hips. They don't have a lot of movement whatsoever. So ball-jointed hips, you know what that's like. Double-jointed knees, which are really nice. You can get a nice full bend out of those, and you can get a lot of articulation out of the ankles too, as you would expect, because there's not really any armor around them. The toes bend up and down, Maybe a little too much, and we'll talk about that in a minute as well. And the feet will spin around. The wing binders are pretty articulate. They'll go up and down and hinge all over the place. Most of this is for the transformation, but you can utilize it in the articulation to kind of give the Delta Plus a little bit more expressiveness that the articulation doesn't give it. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the stability of the kit and the way that it is posed. The trick is the intuitiveness with which poses and stability are accomplished. It's not intuitive or natural at all. Most poses, despite the fact that the Delta Plus has these gigantic feet, most of the poses, your weight is either all on the toe or it's all on the heel. For instance, when I have it posed like this, right, you can see it's a little bit tippy. And that's because I'm either distributing all the weight on this heel or I'm distributing all the weight on the toe. You can lift the toe up and it'll stand up just fine. And the problem, the underlying problem to this is the way that the kit is designed. I'm gonna kind of hopefully explain this a little bit and show you the geometry of the ankle joint and the toe. So because of the transformation, the toe has to fold down like this. And the way that Bandai has chosen to accomplish this, if you look in here, is this whole piece here is hinged. So the whole toe actually hinges on a little double peg joint in there, way up in there. You can kind of, there, you see that? That little peg, and there's one on the other side. And that's what holds the whole front of the foot. This whole section is held up by that hinge. And that leads to problems. When you have that not flat and you put weight on it, it just wants to kind of push itself up. And actually, you can, you can kind of pose it that way. If you take this gray piece here and prop it against this piece like this, all the weight can be supported on the toe of the kit and you can have it like lean crazy far forward if you do that with both feet you can actually do some crazy like um smooth criminal uh poses with that and it's actually very very stable that way it's not going to really fall over any more than any other master grade but that leads to problems when you're trying to get it into other poses where you're maybe like like a walking pose or something like that it tends to want to just fall over if you get too much weight out on the toes and you're not using the weight on the heels because they just collapse and that i think is the problem with the ankle joints of the delta plus it's not that it can't stand up it can it's just the way that you do it is just awkward it's not normal okay so Let's take a look at some of those accessories. The accessories all work pretty well. The beam saber hilts slot into the hands nicely. They have a tab and slot system to them, as you could see maybe when we were looking at those accessories. And the Delta Plus looks pretty good. The beam rifle looks great. However, you will fight with the beam rifle. It doesn't go into the hand perfectly, despite the fact that it has a tab. Um, every time I posed it with the beam rifle, I did the full pose and then put the beam rifle into the hand because if you put the beam rifle in the hand first and you go to move the kit around, you're just going to knock it out of its hand. The shield looks great. It attaches to the elbow and that little peg moves around a little bit, which allows you to kind of get it out of the way, despite the fact that it's kind of large and long. So the shield's probably my favorite accessory for the Delta Plus. 
And with that action base connector, you get the Delta Plus up in the air like it's supposed to be flying around in space, zooming around and screwing up everyone's lives. So all in all, the accessories look great. They work fairly well and the articulation is okay. Nothing great in either one of those departments for the Delta Plus, but it does look really, really good. Let's compare it to some other Master Grades. This is the Master Grade 2.0 Gundam. It's quite a bit taller, sleeker, and mono more monochromatic. And here it is with the Hyakushiki 1.0, the first Master Grade Hyakushiki, and the Master Grade Phoenix. Looks great with the rest of those, and I'm not transforming the Phoenix into destroy mode because its transformation process is almost as bad as the Delta Pluses. Here it is with the high grade Delta Plus, and right away you're gonna see that difference in the color. It is a vast, huge difference when you put them next to each other. You don't notice it at first, but when they're next to each other, you really see the differences in color. All right, let's transform this beast. Oh boy. So the transformation process is immensely complex and tricky. And here we go again with that shoulder and arm coming apart. It's attached via this very, very, very small C-clip and is always constantly popping out. For most of the transformation, you're gonna to wanna to just take those arms off and do it. It's just much easier that way. Anyway, let's move on. Now, this part is actually very sturdy when the cockpit is latched into place. If you've transformed any Zeta or Zeta Plus model kit, you know this step here of pushing the head down into the chest and lifting the rest of the chest over the head. And that part falls off. These little thruster pieces on the sides of the shields or shoulders are always falling off. They're super tricky. And then you have to fold these arms up and the, the kit just comes apart. Oh, it's, it's immensely frustrating everyone it's it's super duper frustrating the arm fell off again here at a different spot than the c clips have to put that back on again i highly recommend just pulling the arms off at the shoulders transforming the rest of it and then putting them back on you unlatch the hips so you can spread those out if you transformed any zeta plus or zeta 2.0 kit you're pretty familiar with this this little piece here pegs into the back skirt and then clips onto the underside it's really tricky to get that just in the right position but it can be done and you kind of have to hold it together <laughs> you get this very weird looking system here and then you get out these hip parts these are nice because they lend stability or like the zeta plus this was like the weakest part of the transformation it was always floppy here and you have to tab all of these things together it's very involved to get it just right and it's pretty frustrating but once it's together it's nice because you don't have to worry about the kit kind of flopping all over the place and then you have to get the arms in these positions like i said i took the arms off folded everything up put the arms back on okay then you bring in the shield the shield works pretty well it clips into a little C-clip here on the bottom after you slide that nose cone on. It will try to separate itself and split apart as you slide it into like the cockpit area. <sighs> anyway, the wings move around. This is exactly straight from the Zeta Plus Master Grade, the way that the wings work. You fold up the legs. You have this little piece here that you're always fighting with with the Delta Plus, even the high grade, that part's annoying. That little lower leg stabilizer. It does this really cool sliding thing there. That's a pretty neat little gimmick. Bring in your action base connector and plug it in. And then you've done all this work and you've been very, very careful and you go to put it on your action base and this happens. Guys, I've transformed a lot of master grades, real grades, high grades over the years. And this was probably the most frustrating transformation that I have ever Done. I actually had to walk away from this model kit at this point and finish the shooting later. <sighs> but once you've done all the work, you get a nice looking Delta Plus Wave Rider mode. It looks really, really good. And it is a lot more stable than some of the older Wave Rider modes like the Zeta Plus. To give you an idea of how complex the Delta Plus is, the Master Grade Zeta Plus instructions for the transformation are about two and one third pages long. The Delta Plus, seven full pages of instructions. 
It's a little more stable, but that's a lot more work to get this Wave Rider mode. You can take this beam rifle and put it on the back skirt on the top if you want to kind of change the look. And here it is with the Master Grade Zeta 2.0 Gray Zeta transformed into Wave Rider mode. It looks pretty good with other Wave Riders. And here it is with the High Grade. To me, honestly, the High Grade looks better. I think it looks sleeker. It looks more appropriate. It doesn't look as much like a folded up giant robot as the Master Grade does, probably because the Master Grade is a folded up giant robot. But I think the High Grade just looks better. The, the Master Grade has a lot more detail to it, but I can never get the nose cone to like sit upright and straight. So who's the Delta Plus 4? Well, in case you haven't figured it out, this isn't a kit that I recommend for everyone. This isn't a kit you have to go out and buy. There's nothing amazing about this kit. In fact, that I think is the, the hallmark of the Master Grade Delta Plus. There are so many concessions given to the fact that it has to fully transform that it doesn't really do anything well. It does everything okay, adequately, but nothing great. It's kind of like Riddy as a new type. I mean, yeah, he's a new type, but... Does he have any great characteristics? Anything special that makes... Is he a great pilot or a great empath like some of the other new types? Not really. He's just a new type. And this is just a master grade. There's nothing really that is great about it. Like I said, I've built a lot of master grade Zeta types, fully transforming kits, even the real grade Zeta. And, and nothing has brought me such consternation as the master grade Delta Plus and its transformation. So if you really, really like transformations, or if you're a completionist trying to collect unicorn kits all in the one to 100th scale, then pick up the Delta Plus Master Grade. But if you're looking for the best version of the Delta Plus, buy the High Grade. It's far better, it looks better in both modes, and the transformation doesn't make you want to kill yourself. <laughs> I really was disappointed with this kit, there's a reason that I never picked it up. I always read all these scary reviews and everyone saying it was a horrible, horrible kit, but I, I wanted to try it for myself and I was really hoping that it would be a better, better kit, but it's just not great. It's good, but it's not amazing. So that's it for the review of the Delta Plus. Make sure you click subscribe down below. Check out Gunpla Network for everything that you need for your Gunpla hobby. And as always, everyone, keep on building.